Welcome everyone, another review of uh, another ghost show that just premiered here recently at the time of this recording. Uh, this one is a claims to be a six-part series. I'm not sure why it's only six parts. I guess they're going to look at ratings called Ghost Brothers, or the first uh, paranormal uh, investigator, the first black paranormal investigator team. It's a team of three guys. Um, I don't know if you can call ghost hunting paranormal in terms of that's the only paranormal thing out there. It seems to be what people look into uh, because it's so easy. This is another contrived Hollywood thing. There's two guys here who met at a fraternity in Atlanta, and the third guy they were introduced to by their barber. So they're friends, supposedly. And this show was produced by the same guy who did Ghost Hunters, who put together a similar team of white dude plumbers. Um, and of course, scripts everything they do, and they have absolutely no background whatsoever in paranormal or anything else. Uh, it's interesting in the first show that uh, they try and talk about the experiences they had as kids, which you can just see is all been memorized and written for them. Uh, certainly, this is not unscripted, but of course, they're all unscripted. They all claim to be, um, which of course is a complete and total joke, and it's a lie uh, that really should be um, illegal to mislead people that this is unscripted. And of course, um, all sorts of things go on in these shows, uh, as usual, behind the scenes that people don't understand. Uh, they are not documentaries. Uh, they are con contrived events. Producers may not tell the people involved that are hosting the show, but they'll go behind and rattle things and throw things and push doors closed. And, of course, you have to react to all these things like it's the most traumatic thing you've ever had. So, you know, they have no training. They have no background. They've studied under no one. They have no interest really in this except cashing a check uh, like just about all these people. And every single one of them comes down to people that uh, are not in the industry whatsoever. And, you know, I can see that as a television producer because, you know, people in the industry aren't as charming, interesting, and as funny as I am. Uh, so the whole idea is that... Um, <laughs> the whole idea is that uh, you want to bring in some comic relief, some professional actors. Maybe these people wanted to become actors. They don't really state what degrees they got in college. Maybe they're in the local acting schools in Atlanta. Uh, it is a area of uh, filming quite a lot. There are studios that opened up there and it is a big area where uh, The Walking Dead is filmed and many other series are now being filmed in that Atlanta area. Um, so who knows who these guys really are? They don't really state what their background is, but uh, you know, it's always amusing to hear um, people's stories of what they consider happened to them. And of course, they're just jokish in nature and things that have happened to everybody. Like I felt a presence in my room when I was a kid. I thought there was a monster in my closet under bed. Well, what kid hasn't thought that? And the sensing of someone being in the room or other things like that. Uh, you know, these are all things that are quite, quite common. And uh, the joke is them all is not done by these three guys, but by one guy who I cover in another review is that he had a near-death experience, which is why um, he was the way he is. But not near-death experience as in occult sciences, but he almost died in an accident. Well, that's not a near-death experience. In the, in the common term of it, yeah, he almost died experience. That's not a near-death experience where you have vision, see things go through tunnels. But of course, you didn't even read that much to figure out that story. These guys have the most ridiculous stories, the most ridiculous. So it's, it's, uh, as the shows go, it's, I don't know how people can continue to watch series after series of these things. They're on for 10 years. Every episode, no matter who you watch, is all the same. And it's now coming down to, of course, since it's all the same, it's all scripted, it's all that what's going on there, it comes down to, of course, how can we make this interesting? Who's the personality? You know, you've got Baggins, the serious investigator. Oh, I've got to find out. We're hunting demons. And, of course, the plumbers, and you got the good old boys, I'm as dumb as a rock, we're going to help and get ghosts for Jesus. Um, now we've got the cool dudes, uh, who are kind of amusing and kind of funny, and talk to their wives on the phone, and, uh, you know, they're cool dudes. 
And, uh, of course, you got the dumb idiot plumbers. And it goes on and on with every one of these shows, which gets so damn tedious of what's going on. It's getting to the point that it's becoming so pl commonplace and so much of it, people are going to accept the fact that uh, ghosts and experience all these things are something that is just part of everyday life. And um, to a certain extent, that's good for the occult sciences for people to understand and know that uh, these kind of energies exist. Uh, so it's positive in the longer run, because I think by now everybody, uh, I don't know if you could find a person who wouldn't think that ghosts exist. But, you know, ghosts, spirits, all these things are, are, you know, need to be categorized in a cult science manner to really have any value. So while this show is not comedic, it is more lighthearted. Uh, they have the kind of um, humor you see from in so many type black uh, comedy type movies. Uh, they tend to overreact. They tend to be more scared. There's a few jokes here and there. And as I said, they talk to their wives on the phone and they're interrupted them during um, ghost hunting, like you'd keep your phone on. And um, these type of things happen. And um, it's really, you know, as these shows go, it's just a bottom of the barrel in general. It's just not all that interesting. Uh, it would be more interesting if they made it into a sitcom and actually uh, structured it more. And uh, these were the funny people going out on, you know, Ghostbuster type uh, missions would be much more interesting. So I don't quite get this. Um, there certainly aren't unraveling any new information. I mean, you can tell um, uh, how disconnected these people are by the way they talk about some of the technology do you have do you, do you have the um um your uh, uh actual um uh, they use the term i believe recording machine or something like this instead of saying um or or they use the term machine your voice machine instead of your voice recorder nobody says machine when you're talking about one of these digital recorders you carry with you to try and pick up things you can't hear with the normal ear you know nobody uses that terminology um it's a recorder um and uh so it just shows you how they don't really know what they're talking about they fumble with the equipment uh you know this was demonstrated in the good old boys who went back to their original first episode of their series, which is about three seasons ago, and said, yeah, this is where we learn ghost hunting. So they learned ghost hunting in this location on camera uh, in their first episode. So this is exactly what's happening. And, you know, there are courses offered out there. There are professionals in this field, different people that they could bring in as advisors or even as part of the team. As I said uh, before I deviated there, I certainly can understand bringing in a more interesting or actor type people people. Um, but that should be included with more professionals in the field. But the problem with bringing professionals in the field is, is that they tend to be a little more honest and uh, they're probably much harder to deal with. Um, well, these people basically are nothing more than, uh, you know, uh, dinner theater actors, uh, local dinner theater actors um, that are brought in to play a particular part and do what they're told and given their scripts. So others are probably not that easily um, uh, put into these positions and are as corrupted easily. But, you know, money corrupts everybody and people want to be on TV and they look the other way and all these things. But they don't want to be, but you put your credibility online. And, you know, it's interesting that not a single show on TV has one single credible uh, paranormal investigator on it except one who's not connected really to anything or any business that I'm aware of. But, you know, there are people that do different things out there and um, there are people who are experts in this area. None of them seem to be used either as advisors or brought in even occasionally on film or should be part of the cast. Why don't they talk to these people? Why don't they have a meeting with them before or after? Um, so, I mean, all these things add absolutely no credibility whatsoever. This is done by the typical Hollywood machine to churn out the same old garbage because these things are made very, very cheaply. And that's why you're seeing so many on the air. Um, cable shows oftentimes get very similar ratings. No matter, you could put up a blank screen on cable things and you'd get a certain amount of viewers uh, anyway. So there isn't a great variance between one cable show and the other. 
um, unless it's a big hit. So, you know, things like the, um, uh, the Throne show. There's several other shows on the, um, the um, um, there's several shows that have pushed their way uh, up to the top because they become super popular. And most of these come from HBO areas. Uh, so, I mean, they have a very wide audience around the world. But, you know, when you get into these cable shows as much, they have to fill air. And how are they going to do that? Well, reality shows are very cheap. Um, I don't know what these guys are getting paid. Um, but the point is they do get paid uh, as well as paying other people, but they ain't paying them like actors. And the people who pocket most of the money are the producers and the production company who make lots and lots of money off of this. But people like uh, Zach Baggins and so forth have made millions and millions off of their show Ghost Adventures and is making more money with more shows that he has on now as well uh, and uh, it certainly can be very well paying especially once you become a hit you know instantly uh, initially these people are probably getting scale which is maybe 800 a day or whatever it is um, but after that if you're a hit you know you get the big bucks I mean Zach Baggins drives a $200,000 Bentley uh, maybe it's more than that even so the, hundred, the whole idea is that uh, these, there is lots of money in this, and that's going to keep you uh, as fraudulent as possible. So uh, where it goes with these people, I'm assuming there's other plans if it's successful, like most things. And, um, but it's an easy way and a cheap way to fill airs with all these different shows we're seeing out there in these uh, documentary type shows and these pseudo documentary type shows on UFOs and ancient alien. All these things are very inexpensive to make. People have no idea the cost it is to generally do a even a sitcom or a full fledged movie or even a TV series. It's very very expensive, millions and millions uh, to do one episode. A show like this is very inexpensive to put out there, and um, even with mediocre ratings. Uh, since it cost them so little, there's profit involved in it. So, um, it's just one of the many of the stream there, and um, there's certainly nothing to learn here. I mean, the same question comes up over and over, and of course, they're never going to do that because there are never any serious shows with serious researchers. Is more of the nature of what spirits are, these ghosts, these humans in uh, discarnate, and um, how they interact with this world, and ultimately, what can we learn from them, and can they assist you? As an occult scientist, that's what we're looking at. Is there some way they can assist us in this world? Is there something they know that we should know? Why are they still attached to this world? Uh, is this the process everyone goes through? And how come only some people can communicate with the dead? So, I mean, these are really valid, valid questions. And to think that you can go to a location like these people do, and let me fully understand here, though. You know, this is inexpensive compared to real TV, uh, but it is still expensive. Text, cameras, everything else costs a lot of money. you got to go into these places, move in trucks. They have large crews. Uh, what you see on screen is, is three people, but behind the scenes, there's probably 50 or 60 and big trucks and all sorts of things that you have to move into neighborhoods, get permits. It's, it's a complicated process. So it is not cheap. So the whole idea is they're not spending days or weeks in a spot. They go there for a few hours and make sure something happens one way or another. And usually it's all pretty pathetic. It gets down to the personalities and here's some jive guys. Woo, look at that. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, but the problem is we've seen so much of this now, it's a little bit uh, too much uh, too late. Um, so there's, I can uh, safely say there's absolutely nothing to learn from this show in any way whatsoever. Um, and um, of course, it is not a comedy per se because people wouldn't take it serious and they'd laugh it off. There's no comedy ghost hunting uh, reality show that has worked where it's taken as spoof. Uh, there's been a few movies like that, which are spoofs. The famous one about rock group, which I can't remember uh, at this particular point. Um, but generally, you know, spoofs don't work and uh, people are not interested in watching spoofs. They want to see 
uh, something that is based in reality and they want to hear these traumatic stories. As Ghost Adventures does, it's oh, everything's demons and being attacked and being scratched and being all these other things. Well, it's pretty fascinating, uh, but you know, they never come up with any answers and not interested in doing any really serious research or bringing anybody in of value. Um, uh, what they do is, you know, if something from another reality can come into the fact that it affects physical objects and can actually scratch you. Um, this is some really mind-blowing uh, research that needs to be looked into. But of course, you'll never get that from these people. And of course, they don't help anybody either. As I said, there's only one show that has any credibility whatsoever, and we will review them called The Dead Files. And believe it or not, they even try and help people at the end. Uh, so. Um, while well, these shows go into terrified places and uh, do absolutely nothing but, you know, make their money off you, like is very typical, uh, use the people that are there. I don't know if they're paid anything. I hope they are. Uh, most of the times when it comes to interviews, they don't get paid. I never got paid for the multiple interviews I did and would never, ever do it again. Uh, so the whole idea is that uh, they make a lot of money off of you and even regurgitate what the show as I was even on, uh, a couple of them, they even turned into books and used my name and my situation in a book to make even more money. I mean, this is the kind of unbelievable scum buckets that this whole industry is. Um, and that was the BBC, by the way, who has no credibility whatsoever like any other news organization. So, but this is just another one of those many shows out there and um, which are all repetitive and they're now to the point that they're screamingly boring uh, and it's getting up to the numbers that are even um, uh, up to the medium shows. Uh, which there's a hundred mediums on TV as well. Why? Because it's cheap. And apparently people are watching ghost shows and medium shows, which is quite interesting that uh, people have this kind of interest uh, in a world uh, that is uh, so um, boringly based in Christianity uh, as um, the United States tends to be. So it's quite interesting um, uh, that these things have such popularity. So... With that, uh, here's a show you definitely should miss along with most of the other ones like the Hillbillies Hunt Ghosts. Um, try and miss these shows twice.